everyone, and welcome back to the West Marches. It's week 21. I'm JP McDaniel, joined by the Nerd Fusion crew, minus the CEO, though, because no one wants the boss here, right? No one wants seven around. Yeah, just, he's just, bossy, man. Definitely yeah. not. <laughs> don't tell him we're playing games right now. Yeah, let him. Don't. <laughs> no one tells us. Be working. You know? <laughs> exactly. No one let him know. No one let him know. And of course, we've got uh, Steven as our DM. We'll go around the, uh, the, I guess, the table here, the u metaphorical table. Let's find out what uh, we, we've seen waffle and bacon on before. This is Dan's first go at, I think, role playing in general. Is that right, Dan? Have you played D and D before ever? I, my only experience with D and D is Baldur's Gate. And those games um, back in the 90s. Okay. So, so I have no other experience in that. Yeah. So basically your first time rolling die and, and playing a character in yes. this fashion. Interesting. First, I, yes, yeah. first time. Nervous at all? What, what are you thinking right now? How are you, how, how you going to approach lot, this? I will need a lot of help. <laughs> I will ask lots of questions and I'll need guidance. <laughs> okay. Well, as long as you're asking questions, you're on the right track. Uh, yeah. Waffle, you were on, uh, and I think Bacon was on the same episode as you, right? The yeah, yeah, Death was Frost Doom or something like that. One shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's when I punched a lich in the face. Uh, yeah, that, that was good. Oh, and I had that um, the paladin. I can't remember his name that wore a wig. Uh, uh it was just your last name was Justice. Just or no, my like whole that. name was Justice. I think is that what it was? And I did things in the name of Justice. In the name of Justice. That's right. Yeah. I made some pact with the demon guy, and I should have freaking killed Seltzer, and I still regret that I did. Oh, that's right. Rachel was on that show. I forgot about <laughs> yeah. that. I forgot about that. Oh, yeah. She took the the, the, um, the opium or whatever and was, like, trying to do drugs. That's and right. I, or, I got cocaine? Like, I don't remember what it was. Because I broke my pact with the demon instead of killing Seltzer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that party was a little bit different in the fact that it was one shot. We all knew we were going to die. This, uh, this show's... More structured, I guess you could say now, where people live on past one we're, show. We're not supposed to die. Sometimes. Sometimes, Sometimes unless you're man versus game, and then you just wipe the entire party. Uh, but that was that was like <laughs> week four. That was a very yeah. long time ago. Um, we only had one total party wipe. Yeah, we've only had what one character death since then, I think, with uh, with Julia. Uh, I can't have only been one. There must have been others. Oh no, we've had Maggie. Maggie mm -hmm. died as well. Yeah. Maggie died. Juliet died. Maggie would die, to be honest. We've actually <laughs> gone back and seen Maggie's corpse <laughs> in <Yeah>. the game. <laughs> and uh, nice. we traced those footsteps. So, uh, so yeah. I guess it's also probably a good thing to just go around here. For those that uh, don't know Waffle, Bacon, and Dan, to just do a, a small, quick introduction. Waffle, you want to do it real quick? Start yeah. us off. Um, so we're all part of Nerd Fusion, which is a production company now based off here in Seattle. My name is Waffle. I stream a variety of games. I used to do a lot of Minecraft. I've kind of branched off since I've... Didn't really like Minecraft too much anymore because after 7,000 hours, it gets a little boring. Sure. Uh, just, sure. There's so much to do, but like I feel like I did it all. So I'm kind of giving it a break. So now I've been branching out and doing a bunch of stuff. I'm I'm kind of stuck on a lot of simulation games right now, specifically Janitor Simulator. What the which fuck? Is like, I've seen you play that like every dude, why? I can play that game for... I, I play that game off stream. Like, you people don't like, know this. How about this. you play that game in real life in our kitchen right now? Mm, how oh, about, shit. Dan, how about you play that game in your room? All right, have you seen how messy that shit is? Come on. Oh, my God. Well, Should have seen Waffle prancing around when he got 108% in, in. I was. In it was pretty good. It Jesus was pretty good. Jesus Christ. But uh, but yeah, I'm over at uh, Twitch.tv as Giant Waffle, and I uh, I'm pretty bad at games, but it makes you feel better about how bad you are too. So there you go. There you go. Our, I know Bacon, you're in studio, right? You're you're in the Nerd Fusion studio. Yeah, yeah studios and, right now. And both are. Waffles at home because he's been too lazy to set up his. Studio. Tomorrow is moving yeah. day for me. It's Man. all in the mm. living room. Don't come home, by the way. The <laughs> living room is filled with boxes, and I'm sorry ahead of time. Right, like we're not used to that. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. we've never had boxes in our place. We no. get like four deliveries a day of. I boxes. had to pay a hundred and fifty dollars to get all your boxes taken away because there's so many in the garage. <laughs> the garbage company wouldn't take them. Oh, like oh, an I paid old for that. polyamorous married couple. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's this what, is how we live. We really want to go over money waffle. Yeah, yeah. really. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, bacon. Are we talking to me or Dan right now? We're talking to you, Bacon. <laughs> Do a quick introduction of who you are. I'm Bacon underscore Donut on Twitch, Bacon Donut TV on YouTube and Twitter, and uh, I play a lot of Minecraft still. But I'm I'm a variety curious, so I'm starting to play more more, other games more often. <laughs> Variety <laughs> curious, nice, nicely done. Is that is? Are you coining that term? Is that a bacon uh, donut I joint? I've been using it. I don't know if I'm the first or not, but I've never heard it before, so I, I think you're the first. 
Yeah, I've I've been pretty much just Minecraft for most of my time, and I'm I am far from done with Minecraft. But like my it, it like E three really kicked it off for me. Like my my desire to play other games is just rising. So, uh, That's good. so I've I've started doing more of it. It's good. It's good. And last but not least, Dan down there in the uh, I guess you're up there in the bottom right hand corner. I'm looking at yeah, Skype. I'm up there. Anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, do a quick intro, man. Hi, I'm Dan from Dan's Gaming. I've been on Twitch for about six years now, and I play a variety of games. You never know what I'll play next. That's that's my thing. That's a nice tag. Is that your official tagline? Because that should be. Dan's that's Gaming, my thing. you'll never know. No, no, no. Dan's Gaming, you'll never oh. know what I play next. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been using that for a while. I kind of like it. There you go. There you go. You're also, is yours purple? I thought yours, your, your Nephi, that's what you call it, your little oh, mascot? That's a TwitchCon shirt. Oh, that's Mine's a TwitchCon shirt. Green. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is. They had to be purple, but mine is green. Why? Why do mine they all have to be purple? I feel like there've been so many, so many better shirts. Dude, they were. All purple. Yeah, that was kind of unfortunate. Yeah. They forced the purple. Yeah. yeah. They thought it would be cool because everyone likes buying the Twitch purple shit, right? But that's because it's the Twitch purple shit. It's Twitch purple. No yeah. one wants like yeah. broadcaster purple shirts. Unless you're the exact like, same me. purple as Twitch. With yeah. me, it would have been green and green and purple, which would be like Barney, and I'm like, eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, weird. Eh. One of us, pause on pause. His nephew is purple, so everyone's like, "Why do you all have five pause shirts?" <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, I guess Stephen too for those uh, for the fans of Waffle Bacon and, and Dan Yo. here. Why don't you intro yourself as well? I uh, man, I don't know what to say. Like basically, the only thing I do on the internet these days is play Dungeons and Dragons right here with JP. Um, it's either I'm running this game, uh, there's a second game that I run called Sagas of the Icelanders, uh, which is set at a di completely different rule set called Sagas of the Icelanders. Um, I play in a game called Swan Song, which is run by uh, Skinny Ghost or Adam Koble, he's the GM for that one. Um, all of that is really fantastic. Uh, I love playing d and I can't wait to play more of it. Uh, outside of the internet, I work in the games industry. I too work in the games industry, yes. Um, and uh, I'm currently working on a game called Roller Coaster Tycoon World for a company called Invisio <gasps> in, yeah, in Montreal. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah, buddy, it's. Gonna be it's fun. I'm I excited. Love Roller Coaster Tycoon. Or AKA, how can I make the the biggest death machine possible that people will still want to ride and pay money for? That's how Our, I approach it. Simulator. Are you going to be at PAX? Does world mean MMO or does World, world mean settings? Uh, yeah, we'll all be at PAX. We're yeah, here we're in Seattle here. already, so we're basically at PAX. Or, yeah, we're ahead of time. <laughs> so you'll you'll get a chance to go see it if you want to. Yes. So you guys are going to have a booth okay. there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Atari has a booth there, and they're going to be showing off nice. Roller Coaster Tycoon World. Yeah, I guess. Fuck, I guess we'll all be at PAX next week. I can't believe it's starting God, next week. Is that week. next week? Wow. Yeah, yeah it's next fast. week. This time. Oh, next Friday it starts. Oh, my God. What is it Tuesday? No, yeah, it's Tuesday. Okay. So we have a week in like three or four days. Yeah, I get up there on. Mm -hmm. You guys all get it there on Thursday, right? We're already here. We oh, I guess, live. yeah, that's true. That's right. Yeah. We live here. <laughs> How far a drive are you guys? We got here a couple Roughly. months early. Not too far. It's like 15 minutes or so. Well, that's not too bad. You guys are just staying in, mm -hmm. in the house, I assume, not at a hotel? Uh, I'll have a close hotel. I think Dan might as well. Or are you guys yeah. just staying at the house? I, I, I just want to be like able to walk there every morning. Yeah, yeah that's true. After yeah. the Twitch party, Traffic we need a way to get crazy. back uh, without having to drive as long as Oh, distance. yeah, Waffle, mm. let's talk about the Twitch party. And, and well, let's talk about the morning after. You know, our signing is at noon on Saturday, right? I heard it's at 1230. Uh, yeah, 12 yeah. o'clock. And the party's the day, on Friday. And then Saturday after. at 12. Mm. And last time at PAX East, we got home. No, we were going to IHOP or whatever it was. Around Waffle 6 or House. 7 a.m. It was like 6 in the morning when we went there. Yeah. So this is going to end you well. You realize how <laughs> fucked we are? <laughs> we are fucked, yeah. <laughs> the only people that are going to be up for that, it's, it's, I think it's like me, you, uh, mm -hmm. me, you, Co, Zeke, Elheim, Elheim and, and Anne. So yeah, like, Co it. and Anne are going to be the only people that actually rested for that. Me, you, and Zeke, yeah. and Elheim will probably still be drunk. Yep. Mm. So there you go. <laughs> you be fun. Half the Twitch staff will be gone, too. Yeah. Yeah, no <laughs> one will be there. Like, no one will yeah. be there at all. It'll be... Anyways, I just figured I'd vent about that at every... Point possible because mm, I'm still pretty upset pretty about it. Anyways, uh, why don't we play some D and D? Stephen, you wanna you wanna start us off? I don't know where you're starting us today. So. Yeah, absolutely. So like, for those of you who've watched the West Marches for a while, a couple of things are in a little bit of upheaval. So like, we might not follow the exact same format as you're used to from previous episodes, but it's gonna end up being a good thing in the long run. Um, the most important thing to start off with 
is that we have a returning character, Poe. Um, now, like, I don't actually even know how long you've been gone because I, I don't even have that sheet. Up, uh, well, let's we haven't find played. Out. The last time you played was with Poe, so. Yeah, so it's been like four days or something like that. So let me let me pull up that uh, that character sheet and tell you what day it is today. All right. Hmm. Yeah, let's say it's uh, it's August nineteenth. Okay. Yeah, here you are. I'm just gonna check you off. Fantastic. Cool. Um. And uh, you you spent a little bit of time in town. Um, after your previous adventure, and you have a downtime action that you get to spend. So you can take a look at Roll20, and oh, you can yeah. see uh, there are downtime activities. So it used to be that there was a more complicated, like, actual tracking and accounting of your lifestyle cost and how much gold you had to spend to maintain it and whether or not you worked, whatever. Screw all that. None of that's there anymore. Now you just get one downtime action when you're a returning character, and you can spend it either doing hard work to gain a little bit of gold. You can do fitness draining with Rose Porgid, the captain of the guard in Viriscali, the town that you're all staying in between adventures. Um, that costs you 25 gold pieces and you gain a fitness training diet, which is a D4. You can spend it on any strength dex or con check uh, after I tell you the result of the roll in order to boost the result. Um, or you can go and study with Walton Wern, the head scribe of the Viriscali library. Um, now, Previously, I forget who actually leveled it up, and I should retract that on this sheet, but um, someone made a donation to the library. It allowed Walton Wern to buy a lot of uh, new books and to improve the organizational system of the library. So now, because that's happened, you can just go and take a free study die, or you can pay 40 gold and gain two, or you can pay 40 gold and gain limited advantage on any one check. Um, so some slightly different options there for, for that one. You can go to Eleth Salt, the alchemist, um, and you can take one free healing potion or spend 40 gold to get two healing potions. Further healing potions are the uh, appropriate price of 50 gold pieces. Um, or for future reference, you'll be able to spend money to improve Viriscali. So if you wanted to upgrade the alchemist, Eleth Salt, you could pay 1,800 gold pieces to level her, her up to level two. So, um, Poe, do you have any idea where you would like to spend your time and perhaps money? Uh, How much money do you have? I have 30 gold on my character. I, I'm definitely just going to go to the alchemist and get a free potion of healing. Okay, cool. We don't, we don't have a healer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we not? <laughs> no. Are you... No one played anything that uh -oh. can heal? Nope. Nope. I couldn't I couldn't make a character uh, that quick. It was it was too late. Great. Um, you only have 30 gold. Do you want to try and get some extra gold from these guys in order to, like, spend the 40 in order to... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Already no, no, asking I think us I'm, for I'm gold. Is this what's happening? I'm you right. can't spend it if you die. I get, I get my free healing potion, and they're they're on their own. They got to. Right. I give you healing. ten gold. Will you give me? Oh, I guess that cost you thirty gold. Yeah, see, that cost me thirty. That's why I don't. <laughs> <care>. <laughs> we could. How much is a healing potion just with? Uh, without is it is it forty gold for all healing potions or just is it... straight up buying one healing potion is fifty gold. Okay, it's fifty. So. Yep. So if I, if I spending, give you ten gold, will you give me one? I mean, I'll keep it for myself, and if you get hurt, you can use it to heal. I don't. How much gold do we have? Is it where's that on the sheet? Uh, it's under uh, inventory at the top. Yeah, inventory. Oh, I see it. Okay, you tab. probably have like ten or something. Oh, like I that. have fifteen. Yeah. Is it worth it? <clears throat> no. There's ways in within the game. The the, the mechanics of the game. Out of combat is pretty easy to heal. In combat, the only way we could heal yeah. is through a potion. Okay. Yep. Well, you're not getting any of my gold, man. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't expect it. So I'll All just right, take cool. my free healing pot. Yeah. Um, so you guys are all sitting around in the Viriscali Tavern, which is uh, Frelka's tavern. Frelka is the owner. Um, it's a, a, a sort of half set into the ground. You go down some steps to get down into it. Um, there's a brand new door on front it's it looks like it's been repaired or, or like completely rehinged like the edges of the door frame are a little bit busted but the door is like brand new planed wood looks very fine when you walk in like uh Frelka is sitting there sort of a big burly man with mutton chops he's polishing the counter and sort of humming to himself um can i get each of you to introduce what your character looks like as they come into the door through through the door of Frelka's tavern um waffle how about you what's your character's name 
Uh, my character's name is Snook Smalls, which is the son of his father, Snook Smalls, who is an older character of mine that I okay. kind of always bring down through the uh, through the generations as I go. But uh, so this Snook Smalls is actually quite young for you know a halfling, so he's quite small, uh, fair skin and everything, not a lot of wrinkles on him. He doesn't have a lot of experience either. He's he's brand new, but his dad was an extremely well. I guess you wouldn't call him well known, but like like legendary thief slash assassin. So nice. He's uh, uh, he, how tall are you? What do you look like? Um, I'm fair average for a halfling, again, and my, my dad was quite small, but, uh, fair height and everything. I usually wear a cloak all the time to try to conceal my face, mm. because, uh, just, I, just, I've been learning from my dad for most of my life, so. What, uh, what color is your cloak? Uh, gray, almost always. Uh, it's nice. typically, like, a lighter gray with, like, lines in it, and just to kind of break the, um, the solid color. Like, how do you walk in? Are you, like, sort of bolsterous? Are you calling out for ale? Or are you slinking into, like, a table in the corner? Kind of slinking. A lot more, like, I always observe the environment when I walk into a room and everything as I walk in. So, uh, kind of being cautious about everything and, type, you know, wherever I go, I'm just trying to be a little careful about where I choose to sit and everything. Yeah. So, uh, like, give me, a, give me a perception test. Okay. That's one of your skills. Yeah, I got it. Cool. Let's see. Thirteen, not bad. Yeah, um, you glance around the room. There's like a couple of random proprietors, including this kid Poe, who I think probably is one of the people that like contacted you about doing something. Um, Wait, maybe so y'all. It's a proprietor here. No, Poe is Poe is JP. Um, oh, I know. That's why I'm asking. Oh yeah, the the proprietor. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, the proprietor is here. His name is Frelka. Um, but it's you not see. Po. Okay. Sorry. I know it's not Poe. <laughs> uh, you see um, two windows that are sort of high on towards the ceiling that uh, lead out towards the front of the uh, the, the tavern. Um, there's uh, like a, a section of tables, probably eight or ten tables arranged in the center of the room. A couple wooden pillars with oil lanterns on them that uh, light the space. Uh, there's a bar in the back that goes three quarters of the way across the room. Someone could hide behind it. Uh, maybe the, the, the bartender might even have a weapon hidden behind it. You're not sure. There's an entrance into a back room. Clearly there's someone else back there who's like cooking and, and sort of you hear the clanging of pots and pans. Um, yeah. You figure there must be some kind of extra exit back there since there's nothing residential about the area you just stepped into. Um, Bacon, who's your character? What's what's his name or her name? What do you look like? Um, okay, so I'm I'm a human ranger. The name is Olomain Darkwood. If we ever get far enough into backstory, you'll find that that's not real really his name. He just wanted something that sounded more impressive. <laughs> And, and so he's a ranger, and uh, I'm I'm very like obsessed with uh, the forest and elven culture. Like Ooh. I want an elf, but I'm not. And so like my demeanor and my dress is all like like face paint on and like hood up and trying to act taller than I am, and you know mm -hmm. that, that kind of stuff. Got it. Um, what kind of weapons do you carry on you? Is there anything obvious? Um, I'm very proud of of the longbow. So I, you know, I have that out and over my shoulder and, you know. Cool. So longbow. Um, uh, Snook Smalls, what kind of weapons do you, are you wearing on yourself? Uh, typically I have both my short swords. So I have a short sword on the right, short sword on the left, and I also conceal two daggers. Mmm. Depending on the situation that arises, I typically like using a short sword for a better damage, but if you've got to be quick and sneaky, daggers is where I'm going to go. Nice. Um, and Dan, who are you playing? I am playing Seymour Boom. I'm a human uh, fighter. Um, I walk in, I'm a very tall, athletic, uh, lumbering man. I, I'm kind of dirty. I don't really care about my appearance. I don't really care about social interactions. I'm just there to do what I need to do and I I look like I've seen a lot of battle. Are you um, kind of like back is Are you are you like grumpy looking or just kind of stone faced? Kind of expressionless. And yeah. I have like uh, when people look at me they look they you don't want to feel like you want to mess with me. Like I have that uh, appearance like just like back off kind of. Yeah. And on my back is a giant two-handed uh warhammer. Warhammer, fantastic. Yeah. Um, now, it's worth noting that um, 
your fighter is a dueler, which means that when he's wielding only one weapon uh, in a single hand and nothing else, I think, like, let me just double check the language on that. But basically, if you're using a weapon and a shield, you get plus two to your damage. Um, that F sounds correct. That's, that's what it is on my fighter. Yeah, when you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you get plus two to your damage. Um, but your Warhammer is versatile, so you can use it in two hands, and then you get a bigger damage die for it. Um, yeah, very cool. Big Warhammer. And, like, which of you was the one who called the meeting today? Was it you, Poe? <laughs> I guess maybe I had, like, uh, just your standard, like, wanted posters thrown about across the towns or something like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Like uh, looking for adventures or something like that. Maybe these three L found it. LFG. Yeah, yeah, basically <laughs> LFG posters. So were your posters just like, meet me at Frelka's Tavern at this time, this date? Uh, if you'll allow it to be, I think they had like some sort of magic. So it was kind of like a, a Hogwarts poster where it was moving. Mm -hmm. Sure. Or something like that. Yeah. You cast some sort of glamour on them, sure. Yeah, and maybe I, uh, of the, the options you gave us for the uh, mission, I had a picture of, like, the, the runes or something like that. Okay. Uh, of the, uh, is it is it Chayminster? How do you, how Chayminster, you, Chayminster yeah. runes, yeah. I had a picture cool. of the Chayminster runes and then, like, four people in front of it walking into it or something like that. Nice. And it said to meet at Frelka's at this point in time. So was there anything on the poster that told people what to expect from you when they met you? Uh, no, in fact, I don't even think my name was on it. There was no mention of, of... Okay. Maybe like wanting... Maybe it said like wanting wizard instead of LFG at the top. Cool. Um, so, so what do you look like? Uh, well, I guess if you guys walk in, you see uh, basically... It's like, a, it's like a young Macaulay Culkin, kind of like uh, seven, <laughs> eight years old, sitting at a table. Yeah, he's kind of he's got those uh, just like the blonde hair, very unkept, uh, and then just like very simple out glasses um, with the, like the circular frame, and he's just sitting at the table, and everyone's kind of staring at him awkwardly because he's he looks like a fucking kid because he is a kid. And I guess Waffle, you walked in first, so you saw me. Uh, do I know exactly what you look like? No, I guess do I know maybe who I'm you. For? If I walk in first, I'd probably go up to the bar and try to see if I can get a drink and. Maybe observe a bit more if I don't know exactly who I'm looking for, just to be a bit more casual and blend in. Yeah, um, you know, Frelka greets you uh, strongly. You know, he's he's not shrinking from you or anything. He he meets your gaze. He says, "Ah, welcome to the tavern. What can I get you? Ale, mead, ale, be whiskey, fine. ale. Yeah, very well. Uh, one copper piece. You know, and the takes, copper piece takes your money. He walks back to a keg and like punches the stopper off of it. Ale flows frothy into a mug and he punches the stopper back in. He sets it on the counter. Says, so uh, what brings you to town? You look like uh, the adventuring type. I'm looking for a friend here. Yeah? You know what he looks like? You describe him for me? I could point him out. Uh, not exactly, but uh, he's a job that I might be able to help him with. Oh. Uh, you know anything about it? Um, not much more than what the poster said. What'd the poster say? Uh, I recite to him kind of some th details about the poster, if I can. What, what, uh, Poe, what did the poster say? Like, looking uh, said, for a group said, for... Yeah, it said wanting wizard, looking for, uh, adventuring type for, uh, Chainminster runes. Okay. Acquire within tavern. Yeah, um, Frelka sort of like rubs his chin. He says, oh, ruins of old Chayminster, eh? Oh, well, uh, shame what happened to that place. Yeah, you take care of yourself, but, uh, well, you look pretty fit and trim. I don't see any reason why you should be overly concerned. Ah, Godspeed. Okay, I take my drink and I'll, uh, I'll just wander over to another table if you can't help me find who I'm looking for. Yeah. And kind of observe a bit more. Cool. Um, like, who, who comes in next? Well, if we're going by introductions, it'd be Bacon. Yeah. So, Olaman, you, you walk in and, you know, you see, like, some kid sitting over in the corner and then you see this uh, halfling who looks young for a halfling, but definitely not a child. Um, what do you do when you enter the bar? Um, let's see. And those are the only two? 
like bartender and there are a couple nondescript like villagers you know like uh -uh. they're just wearing you know raggy clothes and they came in from a hard day out in the fields or something like that but those are the only two that look at all out of place or adventurous okay well i'll go up to the halfling then okay so i walk up to the table and uh he's you're sitting down right yeah yeah so i'm standing above you kind of quiet and ominous and i'm sure you're looking at me like what I do am. you you know <laughs> Can I help you? <laughs> and and I say, the winds of the forest have carried me forth for adventure. And I slide a copy of the poster toward him on the table. I, uh, I look up at him. I say, we're here for the same reason, my friend. Take a well, seat and we'll, we'll I, see if I, we can I, find our friend here. This is intentionally supposed to be cheesy, by the way, right? Like, the guy is clearly overcompensating. Awesome trying to be like important cool so do you just sit down or uh yeah i'll sit down all right nice i guess you guys make small talk until uh seymour comes in seymour what do you do i wa i walk in and i see the group gathered in the corner and mm -hmm. i assume that that's probably the people um that i'm looking for so i walk up to them and and say and at saying that i need work and yeah all I really say and I will do the job and then I stand uh, next to them do you have like lumbering there arms akimbo I will do the job yeah uh, <laughs> I just walk in like very very blunt very very brief I don't like to talk I'm just sort of like want to get things done so I'm just sort of standing there waiting you know I, I don't I'm not sitting because because I've been in so much battle, I know that if I stand, I will be in a better position in case something happens. So I'm keeping watch, sort of, of the room yeah. while next to the people. Cool. All right. So, Poe, you've seen a couple of guys come in and sort of gather around a table. Are you reacting to this at all? Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess I'd hobble out of my chair and walk over towards them. Like, what is Dan? Dan, what do you, what is, sorry, I'll start calling you by your character. Seymour, what are you wearing armor wise? Like, you're, you're a, is it ironclad fighter or wearing some heavy armor? Um, chain mail, right? Think, think chain mail, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And okay. a, there's a shield on my back as well. All right. And you guys are just like huddled around having a conversation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just waiting to see the person who uh, put the poster up. Okay. Because obviously it's not the kid that we're there to talk to. So we're <laughs> waiting for the real person to show up. Right. I think, uh, I think Seymour, you, uh, you feel like a. I don't, maybe you think it's someone's hand or something, but I basically take my staff and like hit your foot with it to get you to turn around because I can't reach up and like. You, you, how tall are you? You're fucking tall, right? You're like six foot. Are you an opposing warrior? How tall? I'm very tall, like probably six and a half feet, okay. and very muscular. I think. Uh, what does my character sheet say? It's just so I have it right every show. It's like uh, exact opposite of real life, Dan. <laughs> uh, I think I'm right at four feet, so. I'm very tiny. So, yeah, I, I hit uh, you get hit by like my staff um, somewhere on your leg. It's like, hello. <laughs> like tap or hit. <laughs> it's a uh, it's good enough to get you to turn around, whatever that is. If you don't recognize it the first time, okay. I hit you a second time. <laughs> OK, what like, uh, are you? Are you here for the adventuring? Yes, I'm looking for work. What about the other two? Yeah, I, I peek my head around the ginormous muscles of a uh, of a uh, Seymour, and I said, "We're all here for that." Well, why didn't you come over to my table? Well, I'm sorry, we didn't see you. <laughs> I kind of like sneer uh, a little <laughs> bit at. Uh, I'm small as well, okay. Yeah, no, I sneer a little I just bit. Give at him snow. like a eyebrows. How tall are you, by the way? How I guess, tall am I? Yeah, you're you're short as shit, right? Yeah, I'm pretty short. What's the average height for halflings? Shorter it's than like me, three probably. feet, three and a yeah, half. Yeah, I like actually that. might be shorter than you. I'm pretty sure. Probably around three feet, yeah, three feet, four inches-ish. Okay. Just like, well, uh, you guys, look, you look the part, are you, uh, you ready to do the job? I'll give you the details. I'm ready. I was born now this, ready. Now, this isn't <laughs> ground stuff. Are we talking actual real money here, kid? Uh, I like, I, I, could, I guess I slowly turned. Was, I don't think I offered money. What is the reward... So, like, 
Let me just read for the benefit of anybody who hasn't been to yeah. MEJP's subreddit. Um, and this, this is like information that we as the audience know. And we are reading from the Journal of Drogowit Vyriskowski. Um, but you guys have heard this same information from other avenues in game. So maybe you heard from an outrider or from a guard or from a cousin or something that there's some stuff going down in Shaminster Ruins and maybe there's opportunity for people like yourselves. So, <clears throat> the stunted small-eyed dwarves that still reside in the ruins of old Shaminster are an unwelcoming lot, charging exorbitant fees for lodging. I would not have consented to their highway robbery, but for my boy's insistence that the evening's long shadows were beginning to move in a most unsettling fashion. We were restricted to the upper quarters of the Chaymans to hold, though long into the night we heard the groanings and hammerings of the work far below us. Our assigned guard, Bodrick Postlethwaite, was taciturn, but courteous. We departed for the librarium in the morning, though I couldn't help but ignore Bodrick's directions. What world traveler could pass through Chaminster without even so much as a glimpse of the fabled bone organ? The sight of the great crevasse stood on end the hairs on the back of my neck. Though its music was silent, I could have sworn as I turned back to see movement among the detritus of its floor. The dwarves refused to speak of the area, but I feel certain something yet lives in that forsaken place. It was yeah. very good. <laughs> well done, Clapper. <laughs> uh, so I guess back in game, maybe, maybe that's me reading it and what I think I sound like, but it's really just me reading it like, <laughs> hey, man, the stunted small-eyed dwarves that still reside. That's what you think you sound like, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I finished it. I'm kind of just like I opened my eyes because I was giving a a speech, and I'm just staring at the t the three of you to see how you have responded to this. Again, how old is Poe? Appears eight or nine. Very young. This is a lot coming from an eight or nine year old. I feel. <laughs> um, I'm. I'm standing here kind of confused and flabbergasted. Like I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at Seymour and Schnuck going like, "Is this really happening right now?" Like, yeah, I, I'm wondering who is this child. <laughs> I guess if no like, one says how, anything, I'm like, "Well, <laughs> uh, you guys want the job?" I asked him what book he found this story in. Well, you know, it's. A book? Yeah, hold on, I get it for you. And I guess I turn around and like, put my bag out. So, like, um, Poe, since you don't have uh, Drogowit Vyraskowski's journal, but maybe you did read this in some ancient textbook about old Chaminster, like, back when it was, like, a history book of its rise and fall or something like that? Yeah. Is that the sort of thing that you would have? Yeah, it's, it's not, like, a first hand or anything, but it's, it's basically mm -hmm. a sprawling of that information on some yeah, sheet. Cool. I just, like, pull that out and hand it to... Uh, I gotta start remembering your name. Hand it to Snook. Uh, okay, okay. It's, so all, it's all there. I'm gonna like glance at it and everything. This like I, I guess just to see like the legitimacy of it. Like, is it like a storybook? What is this that I'm reading right now? This. I know this. This is handmade? like. Yeah. It's, it's like a tome. It's. Yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna feel. Illuminated. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna feel a bit more like this is maybe an actually legit thing that he just told us. Um. Well, if and this story is true, rumors about this from other sources as well. Like this is kind of news that's traveling around, or yeah, like um, generally, there's some talk of the town about a couple of places. There's another place called Azamreth, the Pits of Creation, where there's like some wizard who's looking for workers and some some like birds that are harassing visitors, things like that. There's rumors about Chaminster going around where the dwarves have become very isolated. Um, and there's a librarium that's run by a secretive group of scriveners. Um, and then there's, there's also word that thieves have been prowling the area recently and stealing goods from anybody who's traveling to and from Viriscali. So yeah, I hand you the note. I assume you start reading it. I'm yeah. kinda, I guess I'm like looking the rest of the, the group up and down, judging them up by what uh, well, Seymour and, and Alamein are wearing. 
I'll volunteer and say, I came here from my woodland dwelling seeking adventure. And I'm, I see, I intend to find it this day. I can't be a nursemaid, though, so you better be able to hold your own, little kid. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Uh, what about you, little one? I point towards Smook. Yeah. Snook. Well, this all seems to be in order. And if this is what it's said to be, then I'm willing to join you. Okay, and uh, what, big guy, you? I'm not here to babysit. Are you able to take care of yourself, little child? I just kind of like look up at you and stare back at the ground. Be like, I'm all alone. I'm just a kid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I take care of myself, you dumbass. <laughs> well, as long as there's riches, I'm I'll, oh, I'll yes. participate. Yes, lots and lots of riches. I'm sure. All there's right, there's I'm in. something in there, right? You don't just have a runes with no items in it. We need. Um, well, go ahead, one go of ahead. you, one of you was specifically interested in the bone organ, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think, Dan, I think bones. Dan was. Yes. I think Dan was into that. Cool. Like, do y'all have any idea cool. of of what exactly you'd like to try and accomplish when you go out to this area? It can be as simple as like locate and scout out the bone organ. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, if that's all we know of it. I think okay. I think Poe just mm -hmm. wants to go out there just to he's bored like he's bored in the town he just wants to go out and see what all the hoopla is about the runes yeah so let's see I'm gonna up here in the upper left hand corner I'm just gonna ping this bow I'm gonna write down our objective everybody's comfortable with find and scout the location of the bone organ yep mm-hmm uh, by the way, Dan and Bacon, um, you guys can change your name in the uh, the cogwheel on the top right hand corner. You click that and go to display name. Change it to your character's name so when you do all the roles, it shows that. To the character name? Yeah, yeah, you can just change it to. I mean, you can change it to whatever, but changing it to your character name would be better. Keeps us all immersed. Yeah, and it keeps me from having to look over at XSplit to read your real name. <laughs> yeah. Or to read your character name. Okay. I think I did it. Let me. Um, so, yeah. Stephen, like, cool. what do, what do I know about this place other than it's the Chemist, like the the Chaminster rooms? Have yeah. I... So, so Old Chaminster was a, a city um, built around, uh, I think, some kind of a hold or like an abbey or something like that, and um, something you know hundreds of years ago caused it to fall into ruin everybody there died and now it's it's mostly abandoned except for small segments of population that still reside in the ruins um you know that it's about eight days southwest of viriscali and that's about it okay yeah uh well eight days is a long trip so i where well, it's gonna take a while eight days to get there so we'll be traveling for a while make sure everything's in order your rations, your food, and all that yeah. stuff. Do you know yeah, how many means? how many rations does everybody have? Does anybody have less than ten? Yeah, they all should have ten. I have uh, I have six because I used four last time. Okay. So maybe double I check. just like top that out. Yeah, double check your uh, inventory on your character sheet. Uh, I have yeah, five. it looks like Snook only has five, for example. Yeah. So double check. Should get a few more. How much are the I rations? Have 10. Uh, I think it's like a gold for two or something like that. Let me double check. Okay. Uh, yeah, ten. Let's see. Equipment. Um, and for those of you who've seen previous sessions of the West Marshes, don't panic. Uh, this is all part of the adjustment to the West Marshes in that this place is further away. Um, I'm making some changes to like how far things are and how how we get from place to place, but I think it'll be uh, better in the long run. Yes, you can have two days rations for one gold piece. All right, I will buy, I'll buy 14, so seven gold. Cool. We gotta go there and back, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I need to buy at least 10, ra 10 days worth. Um, Yeah, I'll do 12 days worth, so okay. that's, that's six gold. That's six gold, yeah. I'm sorry, what did you say the price was? It's two for one Two gold. rations for one gold. 
Okay. And it, it's an eight day travel, so you gather you need at least 16. All right, yeah. I better do the minimum then because I've only got five golds. <laughs> yeah. I'll buy an extra six. Cool. And we can just adjust that on the sheet, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can just change it. So let me see. Uh, you're going to head. Are, like, are you all feeling comfortable now? You've bought everything that you want to buy. You're ready to take off. Um, yeah, because we can't. We're not going to be able to afford anything else for healing right now, it seems. Now they're 50 per. Yeah, just way too expensive. Yeah. So we don't have a healer. <laughs> um, We've done games without fine. healers before, so don't. We'll see how this goes. Yeah. We'll be fine. You have extra damage. We do have Not extra true. damage. It's, it's what you have to consider. Yep. All right, cool. So um, who's going to lead the group? Like, who's, who's going to be um, using the survival skill to navigate through the wilderness? Who has a really good survival skill? What's that based on? Wisdom. Wisdom. Okay. Uh, uh, definitely not me. It's also in the second column right next to all the stats. Yeah. So if you just see survival. Okay. That's four. Probably be bacon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're going so, through the woods. It's even even for if health. I was the worst at it, I'd be acting like I was the best at it. So. All I'm in. Yeah. Okay, uh, great. Train are we going through? Uh, I think largely it's, it's plains down to the southwest. Oh. There might be a couple forests that you end up going through. But I yeah. get bonuses going through forests. So. Okay, cool. So navigator is Olomain. Who's going to keep track of the treasure? And this is important because at the end of the session, you're going to have to divide it by four and tell everybody how much treasure they get. Not the rogue. Oh, I was going to say, I think that I should. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I volunteer. Yeah, I would think the rogue speaks up first, and I okay. don't have any issue with that. I don't know if the rest of the party does. Feel free to say so. Snook. We don't really know each other too well, do we? Yep. Not really. Besides just no. chatting over ale. There's, a, um, there's like in Varys Valley... In Viriscali and among adventurers, because, like, there is no other adventure to be found in the world, basically. Um, to, the, to the east is a kingdom called Lorien, which is very, very peaceful. Viriscali is technically under the, the fealty of Lorien. Um, like, it's, it's very well defended and well guarded and basically very dull. Um, social mobility is non-existent. You're, you're born into whatever class you're born into and you don't move. So... Coming to the hinterlands, to the West Marches, a meeting at Viriscali, and then going into this unexplored wilderness is basically the only way that people like yourselves have of making something more of themselves. So there's sort of an unspoken pact between adventurers. Like, even if you hate each other when you're here, you're here because you want something more than you hate the people that you're working with. Okay. Cool. Cool. So, navigator, treasurer, um, yeah, who's going to be our, let, I'm going to call it the map maker, but um, I think your role is going to be a little bit different this time. Uh, who wants to be tracking, tracking the things that we find and making note of them for other groups? I'll do that. That's fine. Cool. I think it makes most sense. Yeah. Uh, Poe. Fantastic. Okay, so... Yeah, uh, our session goal is to find and scout the bone organ. If you find and you scout it, then you'll get experience points for completing that goal. All right, so, um, yeah, I, I guess it's probably like mid-afternoon on the 19th of August. It's pretty hot, but it's not crazy or anything like that. Are y'all going to set out right away now that you've visited the, the local general store, bought a couple trail rations, you've got your backpacks hitched up and your water skins full? Is that the plan? Yeah, I'm ready to go. I think we're all yep. good to go. Let's do it. Cool. Okay, so uh, Olomain, would you roll a survival test for me, please? All right. Uh, that would be right there. Ooh, dang. That's pretty poor, unfortunately. <laughs> That's <awesome>. Great. <laughs> uh, would you roll 1d4 minus 2 for me, please? How do I do that? Uh, uh, you can so type in chat. Slash roll 1d4 minus 2. Uh, and I've just chatted it in there, so you need to not have the period before it. But yeah, that's what you do. Gotcha. One. Okay. Mm. Right. So. Well, this is, we're off to a great start. Yeah. Um, you, 
you you begin moving in the direction of uh, the Cheminster ruins. Um, the plains are hot and oppressive, and after uh, like after your first night of camping, um, huge thunderclouds start rolling across the horizon. Oh, um, would all of you make uh, survival tests for me, please? That's just the same roll I did, right? Ooh, yeah. Damn it. I thought Sticks that 19 small. was mine. Holy Minus shit. one as well, so that's a 20. There we go. Nice. Okay, so um, enough of you managed to uh, like do well on your survival. Tell me how you weather out this storm that comes rolling across the plains and it just starts drenching the entire landscape. Does anybody have a tent? Uh, do did we not pack a tent for an eight-day trip? Uh, I mean, we have... You have, like, bedrolls and stuff, but I don't know if any of you actually has a tent. Yeah, I don't mm. know if you have a tent. We just, like, park up under some trees or something. Yeah, I guess it's the best thing we can do. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, so, you know, you you make your way away from Vera Scali, and eventually, like, the smoke from town leaves you behind. Um, you know, the rains wash away any of the, the dust that's been in the air for the past couple of days because it's been so hot. Um, and the grasses get a much needed soaking. When the uh, clouds break and you're ready to move on, it's actually a much, much more refreshing time. Um, it's been two days, so now it's the um, 20th? No, yeah, 21st. Um, By two Ola days. Main, you guys are by now really sick of me talking about how uh, much better I'd be at, at guiding if uh, we were in the forest. Mm, yeah. Um, yeah. Give me another survival test, Olamin. Ah, that's much better. That's much better, yeah. Yeah, so uh, roll a 1d4 plus 2 this time. Nice. What I'm talking about. Cool. Okay. Um, like things become very smooth for you. Uh, you're you're beginning to like find trails of game. You manage to catch a couple like rabbits and cook them over the fire one evening. Um, and uh, it's it's like one of those montages where you're like walking over hills and like str like fording streams and like maybe the halfling is like you know help help. <laughs> it's too deep for me. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm just going to be on Dan's back. Or but on, uh, all in all, you guys managed back. to move very quickly. Um, everybody give me perception tests. Another 20? That's three 20s in a row. That's pretty wild. <laughs> that's a pretty good luck. See, okay, when they so say roll that? a system, that's not exactly what they meant. <laughs> so it's, um, it's noon on the sixth day. And you guys are all sitting around. Um, how do you guys break for lunch? Describe the setting for me. Is there, like, are you near a rock? Have you made a campfire? Like, what's going on? Um, um, if we have meat, let's definitely settle down with a campfire. Okay. Yeah, maybe just a quick campfire set up. And uh, we set up, like, near a rock with some sort of um, structure in mind that we can, like, hide behind it or hide the fire behind it. Yeah, awesome. Uh, is there like a hunting skill? Uh, that would probably be. Well, let me see. Let me look at your character sheet real Isn't quick. Isn't that survival? Because I assume I I would have tried to like find you know. Bunch. Yeah, I, I feel like that would be survival. So go ahead and roll that for us. Let's see how you do. Nice. Wow. Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, look at that. Today. Um, yeah, there was a uh, a magnificent like eighteen point stag that was drinking from a small pool. Um, describe for us how you brought down this majestic beast. Um, well, do you want the truth or what I'm going to tell them when I get back? Let's hear the truth now and then let's, let's see you return with it. Okay. So, so I was uh, trying to track a rabbit that kept getting away from me and I completely stumbled into a clearing where, the, where this deer was just there. And he was so surprised that he didn't have time to move before I shot. Nice, awesome. Well, what do you what do you say when you bring back this deer carcass? Oh, well, I weave an epic yarn about how I've, uh, without saying anything, have really been tracking him over the course of the last day and a half. And I knew that our trails would meet uh, because the gods of the forest have, have blessed me with the premonition. And, nice. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah, fantastic. Um, so, uh, I guess, are, are you the one, Olamain, who's, like, cleaning the deer? 
I, I mean, unless these guys have some sort of proclivity for that, I would assume so. Okay, cool. No, I think we'll um, let you have it. This is square, so, like foresty kind of thing to do. You're like, yeah, I, think it's, I think you're the best one to do it. Yeah, you're, you're sure. cleaning this deer and dissecting it and, and uh, like pulling off haunches to start putting over the fire. Um, who's like watching Al during this? I'm, I'll do that. I mean, I've got like a foot up on the rock and my the staff in my hand kind of just peering around. But Yeah, okay. So, Snook, um, you see off in the distance um, like a, a, a small dust cloud. And when you, um, when you lean in closer, you can see that it's uh, a group of people and there's two of them on horses uh, and one of them, like one of the horses is pulling a small cart. Um, and okay. I think that we should take our first break. We take breaks around here every about, about an hour for about five minutes each time. And when we come back, uh, we'll see how much more you know about these people that you're seeing. Sounds good. All right, let's take our first break. So I got three to go. So we'll be right back. Don't go to more role play coming up right after this. We'll see you guys then.